Hello again. You'll recall that we started with research methodology 1 where we looked at the positivist. This one is research methodology 2 where we look at the anti-positivist. This lesson is based on the syllabus Cambridge O-Level Sociology 2251. The research method part 1 reads as the distinction between positivist and interpretivist approaches to research methods. In this lesson, we will explain what is anti-positivism. We'll look at the difference between the interpretivist and the positivist. At the same time, we'll look at the difference between the quantitative and the qualitative methods of data collection and explain the different types of qualitative data collection methods which are used by the interpretivists. We are looking at research methods and we pointed out that research methods are the methods used by sociologists to collect data for their study and you should also remember that data is a plural noun that refers to the information that the sociologist gathers for the purpose of his study. What is anti-positivism? Other words suggest anti means against. In other words, sociologists who believe that we we cannot study human behavior by using the methods of natural science. They propose an alternative method which seeks to understand, to interpret the meanings behind human action. And therefore, interpretivist, as the name suggests, it comes from the word interpret, in other words, to give meaning to human action and behavior. In short, interpretivists, who we call the anti-positivist, they argue that sociologists cannot use the methods of natural sciences and sociologists should use methods that would enable them to understand the meaning behind human action. By now, you must have understood that the anti-positivists are against the use of quantitative method because they believe that we can only understand people's behavior by finding out how they interpret their own and each other's behavior in different situations. And therefore, using fixed set of questions will not allow sociologists to discover such meanings behind the action of human behavior. People may simply lie or sometimes even not willing to answer to a question or to respond to a structured interview. Let me give you an example of what we mean by discovering meanings. Suppose you ask someone, do you study maths? The answer is yes or no. And you ask another question, is maths a difficult subject? The answer can be yes or no. But did you really understand why he's answering either yes or no? Suppose someone who is studying maths and yet he tells you, yes, it is a difficult subject. You can probe further by asking more questions. Why do you say so? You are studying maths, yet you say it's a difficult subject. Why? person may answer because I'm aware that many people cannot do maths and only few people who are intelligent do it. I feel you need to be intelligent enough to do mathematics. You can imagine what this means, how much more information you get about the meanings that this person attaches to being a student of mathematics which you don't get in those simple structured questions we asked earlier. Let me now give you some more examples in your own context. You're familiar with the classroom, whether the teacher and you are students. There are teachers who interpret the behavior of students as normal and playful and they are more likely to get along with students compared to those who interpret the behavior of students as troublesome. In the same way, there are students in the classroom who would interpret the teacher's approach as friendly compared to others 
who look at the teacher as strict and too demanding. It is the same context, same situation, same teacher, different students giving different interpretation to the situation, different teachers giving different interpretation to the situation and therefore the context or the behavior of the people, the attitude of the people, what they think and how they behave in that context changes just because of the way in which they interpret each other's behavior. And this is what we say that we want to understand why teachers behave in a particular way, why students behave in differently in different classes with different teachers. We can only understand all this if we seek to discover the meanings that each one is uh, adopting or each one is attaching to the behavior of the other. And this is what the interpretive sociologists try to do. Now we're going to look at the methods that the interpretive sociologists use to gather information, to gather data. They use qualitative methods. That is methods that would allow them to present the information in descriptive forms using words. They represent the data, their findings, in words through descriptions of human behavior, contrary to figures and charts and percentages used by the positivists. The interpretive sociologists use two main methods. They also use interview, but not structured, rather semi-structured and unstructured interviews. And they also use observation, which can be participant observation or non-participant observation. The interpretive sociologist uses semi-structured interviews. What are semi-structured interviews? Semi-structured it means that it is not wholly structured as in the case of the positivist with fixed questions and alternative answers. In a semi-structured interview, the interviewer starts with a few questions on the topic that he's interested and allows the conversation to flow more freely depending on what is of significance to the person that he or she is interviewing. For instance, it may not be possible to understand why students misbehave in a classroom by asking a few questions. But it is better sometimes to ask a few questions and allow the person to respond and freely speak out his mind. In this way, the sociologist can better understand the behavior of the students from their point of view. Besides semi-structured interviews, there is also the unstructured interview. In an unstructured interview, there are no questions, but it unfolds like a conversation between the researcher and the person that she is researching. The conversation is around a topic and the researcher should be able to get the person to talk around the topic that is of interest to her for her research. So this is what we call an unstructured interview with no fixed question but focused conversation around a topic of research. Obviously there will be some topics and ideas around which the researcher would like to focus but there is no such fixed question. The questions arise as the conversation unfolds. Besides interviews, semi-structured and unstructured, there is also participant observation. There are two types of observation, participant and non-participant. We are going to look at participant observation first. As the word suggests, participant means that the researcher is studying a group of people and he's part of that group, assuming a role within that group so as to allow him to study the group. If you look at the illustrations here, you see the researcher is also engaged in the same activities as the group. He assumes a role there and is part of the group that he is studying. We call it participant observation. An example from research would be that 
of Elliot Leibow, who conducted participant observation of black adolescents. The study was called Tally's Corner. Tally was the name of the friend of Elliot Leibow who helped him to get into the group and to conduct his study using participant observation. Obviously, he must have used other methods as well that we are going to discuss afterwards. A non-participant observation, on the other hand, is one where the researcher observes a group but is outside the group. This is what is illustrated on this slide. So, uh, the person doesn't become a member of the group but he stays with the group on the side and observes the activities of the group. One example would be classroom observation that was carried out by David Hargreaves looking at deviance in classroom. He was not part of the school or part of the classroom but he was there as a non-participant observer. Let us now see what did we learn today. We were looking at the interpretive sociologist. We found that the interpretive sociologist seeks to discover meanings and motives behind human action. They prefer qualitative data, that is data which are presented in words, in descriptive forms. This is possible through the use of semi-structured or unstructured interviews, non-participant or participant observations. We will now look at some assessment questions. As usual, two marks question, a simple definition. Four marks question, you have to give a definition plus an example. Six marks question, you have to explain with proper examples, at least two. Eight marks question, explain with examples, at least three elements. Ten marks question, you will need clear, to clearly describe and explain different aspects of the problem and 15 marks questions where you should have a proper introduction, provide arguments for and against the statement in the question and a proper conclusion. We have now completed this section on the syllabus which reads as the distinction between positivist and interpretivist approaches to research methods. I hope you enjoyed it and we hope to see you soon for another lesson. You are reminded that this lesson was recorded at home and all the pictures used in this presentation come from opensourceops.com for which we are very grateful. And